You remember when you failed? Yeah, I do. It was the worst. Here's the thing. It's not your fault. This is Contender Cartel, where we help you live the good life. I'm Dr. Nate. I'm going to talk you through this. And let me tell you why it wasn't your fault. Listen to an experience I had. By the time I was in high school, I was running track and cross country. This skinny body wasn't playing offensive line, people. And I was really good at the 800 meters, which is two laps around the track. I'm pretty young in my high school career. I was running the anchor leg of what is called the medley relay. It's kind of a weird race where you run half a lap, then another person runs half a lap, then a third person runs a whole lap, and then the last person runs two laps. So that last person was me running two laps. And since it's the longest part of the race, basically whatever happened up to that point doesn't really matter if you go slow, right? Like it's all on you. And so you have all the pressure. And, and I had a pretty good season. And so I was an alternate to go to the state championship meet. And it was kind of the best of both worlds as far as I was concerned. I got to get out of school, uh, go on a little trip, flirt with the cute girls at the, the meet. And I didn't have to run or suffer. Like for me, I was like, this is win-win. And I was pretty confident I was okay and not going to run because the guy in front of me was really, really good. He was really fast. He went on to be a collegiate All-American, ran at the Olympic trials. He was good, so I wasn't stressing. But as the race time got closer, uh, he raced an astounding 800 meter race before the medley was supposed to happen. And he just didn't have anything left in him by the time <laughs> the, the race came up. So I went over to congratulate him. I still remember him laying there just gasping for air. And he's like, Nate, you gotta run the race. And he's like, you'll do great. And I was like, I don't feel great. I wasn't prepared for this. I was prepared to do some flirting and hang out and have fun, not to actually race. But I went and grabbed my spikes and I wo walked over to the pre-staging area. And I went through my pre-race ritual, the stretching, listening to some music, uh, shaking out my hamstrings, trying to get loose. Oh man, but I just smelt like anxiety here. I promise there, there's an actual smell, this mixture of like anticipation and fear of failure and deep desperation and desire to win everybody around you. Anyways, we make it out to the track. My relay teammates are all quoting rap songs to pump themselves up. The first guy on our team gets to the blocks. They say, runner set. And then, boosh, the gun goes off. And he just explodes and flies out there. 200 meters. Hands off the other guy. 200 meters. Just coiled energy. Just flying right here. Churning around the track. And by the time they get to the 400 meter leg, the third lap, they are doing great in first place. And the 400 meters just hammers it and sprints as hard as you can. It is a painful mess, but I got the baton in first place. And he's given me a lead, not a big lead, but a lead. We are in position right here to be state champions. And I take off running for dear life. I was, I was just fueled by sheer panic. But here's the thing. The other guys were all so amped up. This big stage, the idea of state championship at stake here. And I got passed. And then I got passed again. And each person that passed me added like, felt like added weight on me. It felt like I was running waist deep through mashed potatoes. It was terrible. It, like it hurt so much. My team was screaming and cheering and each step I just felt like I was letting down my friends. I was letting down my coach. I was letting down me. This was my whole life, my whole identity. I, I felt like I was running as fast as I can, as fast as I could in my life. But by the time I stumbled to the finish line, I had ran slower than I had all season. We didn't place. My coach walked up after the race. He's kind of a fiery guy. He took the baton out of my hand. And he coldly said, hey, next time you're going to choke like that, let me know so I can have somebody else run. <laughs> he turns around and walks off. I don't know if you've baked anything before. And you've seen that baking chocolate and you think, oh, I like 
chocolate and you, you can take a bite of that chocolate and it tastes bitter it's not good at all it's just hateful chocolate should be hateful you remember that moment like that's what that's what it was like it was bitter and hateful you remember your moment of failure you remember what it felt like it's real right why does that happen you train so hard you want it so bad no one wants to lose so why does it happen well first of all listen to me it's not your fault but really i want you to listen to me it's not your fault there's two big things going on here the first is fear and the second is a virus basically what do i mean by fear I mean, all of us have deep inside of us, uh, deep in our evolutionary instincts is planted in our, our limbic system in our brain, the most primitive part of our brain, and is this evolutionary instinct to keep you safe. Um, and it, it's, it's really willing to short circuit your performance in order to keep you safe. If it's safe, if there's any risk, it's going to pull back and keep you safe. And that's not your fault. It's evolved over 10,000 years and it's been really helpful in helping you and your ancestors not get eaten by saber-toothed tigers. It's a good thing. The second thing that kind of short circuits your performance is a virus. And, and this is not a literal virus. It's more like a computer virus, a, a brain virus. And now again, I'm not talking about a real virus. I'm talking about in your brain's programming, there becomes some uh, a way that it misfunctions and it misfires here. Uh, you know how you can get a computer virus on your, your computer and it stops the computer from functioning properly? Well, all of us in our brains, we have billions of neural pathways, con electrical chemical connections that make up our brains right here. And thanks to genetics and thanks to different experiences, sometimes our brain gets hardwired in a way that's not helpful. That's not your fault. It just happens. So are we just hosed then? Are we just stuck? Nope. Here's the thing. Cutting edge neuroscience lets you know that you can rewire your brain. Literally anybody can get better at anything. It's facts. So it's not your fault that you have failed. It's okay. You're okay. But if you want a way out, if you want to win, because let's be real, winning is way more fun than losing. If you want to live your best possible life, join us here in Contender Cartel. We'll lead you step by step on how you can rewire your brain, how you can perform your best, how you can always be in contention. It's a fun. It's a good life. Come with us. You'll love it. See you next time.